Are you ready for a journey through history? Today we're going to explore some fascinating stories of engineering projects that didn't quite go according to plan. From failed submarines to hovercraft trains and abandoned boats, these tales of ambition, innovation and unforeseen obstacles will leave you amazed and perhaps a little bit wistful. So buckle up and get ready to discover the untold stories behind some of the world's most intriguing engineering failures. Elvis Presley's Jet Elvis Presley lived like a king and his private planes were no exception. He owned three, which he used for business and pleasure. Graceland sold the first two, then bought them back and parked them on the property where they remain on display today. Elvis bought the third aircraft, the 1962 Lockheed Jetstar, as a Christmas gift to himself in 1976, just eight months before his death. He paid $840,000 for it, which is equivalent to around $4.4 million today. The Elvis Presley estate sold the Jetstar shortly after his death, and it ended up at Roswell International Air Center in New Mexico, where it was more or less forgotten until relatively recently when plans to auction it off were announced. Based on the dilapidated condition of the plane's exterior, it's clear it's been neglected for years. The engines and many cockpit components have been stripped, and the paint is visibly faded. The interior contains swiveling red velvet seating for six passengers, gold and suede trimmings, and a red carpet. There's also a bathroom with a vanity, VCR, and cassette player, which were high-tech features at the time. By all appearances, it was most likely customized to Elvis's liking, but it's unclear how much he used the jet in the short time he owned it. In early 2023, the jet was sold for $260,000 on what would have been the singer's 88th birthday. Hovercraft Train Speaking of failed endeavors, did you know that Britain attempted to develop a hovercraft train back in the 1960s? The RTV-31 was supposed to ride along a track atop a cushion of air created by strong fans and transport passengers from London to Glasgow in just two hours, three times faster than any existing train at the time. But unfortunately, the hover pads were too heavy and didn't function as effectively as engineers had hoped. The engine was also huge and inconvenient to repair, and building the track would have been costly. To make matters worse, there was speculation from the inventor of the train's linear induction motor that the RTV-31 would be unsafe, with the possibility of driving itself off the track. During its first test run, the train only reached a maximum speed of 12 miles per hour, and it lost support soon after. Today, the only surviving relic of the Hobbit train is a single aging car that sits atop a portion of track in Peterborough serving as a constant reminder of a failed endeavor that was once praised as the UK's up-and-coming new form of travel. Spirit of Rochester But let's switch gears and talk about a boat called the Spirit of Rochester. From 1986 to 2004, this boat offered lunch and dinner cruises along the Genesee River in upstate New York. It was a big deal back in the day, attracting thousands of visitors to the area. The boat was named after the city it was based out of and was pretty huge, with enough space for over 500 passengers. The whole thing started when a local businessman named Donald saw an opportunity for cruises in the area after Rochester's 150th anniversary in 1984. He restored the boat extensively after it journeyed to Rochester from its previous home in Connecticut. At first, business was a bit slow, but eventually it picked up and became a hit among both locals and tourists. Donald paid off his startup costs within two years, and sales remained high until 2004. Unfortunately, that year the Spirit of Rochester hit a sunken tugboat and created a hole in its hull. The boat was towed to Rochester for repairs, but it didn't open for the 2006 season as planned. The boat was eventually sold to new owners who started renovations, but it seems they stopped at some point and abandoned the boat. Since 2017, the Spirit of Rochester has been sitting along the Genesee River, slowly decaying and without any clear plan for the future. In 2022, a viewer wrote to local news station 10NBC asking if the boat would at least be scrapped or taken out of the water. The news correspondent was unable to reach the current owner, but a spokesperson from the State Department of Environmental Conservation said that they would only step in if the boat posed a navigational hazard, was leaking fuel, or became dangerous in some other way. It's sad to see such an iconic boat just sitting there with an uncertain future, but we'll have to wait and see what happens to the spirit of Rochester in the coming years. Narco-submarines, or drug-smuggling subs 
Picture this, three snorkels poking out of the water. Sounds like a fun day at the beach, but for the Coast Guard, it was a sign of trouble. What they found was a homemade submarine, complete with an AK-47 and three tons of Go Game. The 49-foot vessel was nicknamed Bigfoot and parked outside the Joint Interagency Task Force South in Key West, Florida, in 2009. According to Rear Admiral Joseph Nimitz, the Coast Guard had heard rumors of the semi-submersible's existence long before they captured it. Bigfoot was just one of three captured, but it was unique in that it was built by hand in Colombia. The name Bigfoot became a term for all smuggling subs thanks to their mythical status, talked about but rarely seen. Building a submarine is a noticeable activity, but cartels have resources and the mangroves along Colombia's Pacific coast provide enough cover to get the job done. Although traveling in a homemade submarine is dangerous, it pays well, as these vessels can carry much bigger shipments than boats on the surface. These submarines are tricky for authorities to spot, not only because they travel mostly underwater, but also because they're often painted dark blue or camouflaged to blend in with the sea. It's believed that dozens of narco submarines reach U.S. shores undetected every year, making the so-called war on drugs an ongoing challenge. What do you think is the best means of transportation in the modern world? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Soviet Walking Excavator Have you ever heard of a walking excavator? Also known as a spider excavator, these machines have arm-like extensions that move in increments, sometimes with wheels, which allow them to walk over uneven terrain. They were designed for use on steep inclines and other positions that are inaccessible to conventional excavators. Their movements also spread the weight of exceptionally heavy loads, preventing the machine from sinking into the ground. Ilyushin IL-76 now let's talk about the Soviet-built IL-76 aircraft that were used for delivering aid in eastern Turkey after a pair of devastating earthquakes in 2011. The plane clipped the wing of another IL-76 while being towed back to the runway and became inoperable. It was left stranded inside the airport for 11 years until the Turkish government announced plans to auction it off in 2022 for just 400,000 Turkish lira or around 21,500 US dollars. The plane's condition was better than expected, as the cockpit was kept covered, but it's unclear whether it was sold or how much it was sold for. U-475 Blind Winner, Soviet Navy Submarine Moving on, let's dive into the depths of the ocean with the story of the Soviet Navy submarine, the U-475 Blind Winner, also known as the Black Widow. The 302-foot-long ship served in the Baltic fleet before being decommissioned in 1994. It was later sold to a private buyer and turned into a floating maritime museum in London, then moved to Folkestone in 1998. In 2004, it was moved for a final time to the River Medway near Rochester, England, where it remains in a state of disrepair, with plans for restoration in the future. Roadside Locomotive Last but not least, let's talk about an abandoned Amtrak locomotive in rural Indiana. The locomotive, believed to be a turboliner RTG built during the early 1970s, sits along Highway 54 outside the small town of Dunga. It's covered in Ralston ship paint and has missing windows, doors and headlights. Little is known about its history, but it's estimated to have been in service for around 50 years. Submarine K-19 Did you know that the Soviet Union built nine nuclear submarines back in the late 1950s? One of them was the K-19, which was supposed to rival the latest nuclear sub-technology from America. However, it didn't quite live up to expectations and faced numerous mechanical problems and accidents. In fact, it nearly sank several times, and over two dozen crew members lost their lives during its several catastrophes. Despite this, the K-19 wasn't decommissioned until 1990, and in 2002 it was even towed to a shipyard with plans to be scrapped. But wait, there's more to the story. Russian Navy veteran Vladimir Romanov, who once served on the K-19, couldn't bear to see it dismantled and forgotten, so he bought part of the submarine and transported the cabin to the banks of the Pavlovsky Reservoir. His plan was to use the cabin as a meeting place for submarine veterans from Russia and other countries. However, the idea was controversial from the get-go, given K-19's tragic history and Romanov's plans received little support. For now, the salvage wheelhouse functions mostly as a monument, and the plans to turn it into a clubhouse seem to be on hold. 
So which story caught your attention the most? Would you rather take a flight on Elvis Presley's jet or journey into the depths of the ocean on a submarine? Let us know in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.